So welcome to another war game review from the players8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a new game from uh, Worthington, and it is Struggle for Europe 1939-1945. Now, this game is designed by Grant, Mike, and Mark Wiley. The, the Wiley, Wiley Brothers. The Wiley Brothers. Yes. Uh, they des design, frankly, most of Worthington's yeah. games. Um, the <clears> exceptions <throat> are the ones where they get other designers in. But um, this one... Uh, uses the same system as Lincoln, which was a collaboration between PSC Games and Worthington a few years ago. A couple of years ago? Two years ago? I think it was in 2017 or 18. Yeah. And that one was designed primarily by Mark Wa Mike Ugh. Martin Wallace. Martin Wallace, yeah. Me. Lots of Mikes and Marks in this one. <laughs> uh, it's a card-driven game. That one's obviously like about the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Um this is Struggle for Europe, but it uses that same core system. Yeah. You have um, cards that you can either use to build armies with, to move guys, to do special events, strategic bombing. Lots of different options on your cards. You have a hand of them. And the game is kind of seeded. It's, pr it's progressive. The Allied deck starts, you know, it's kind of weak. And then the, when the Russians join the war, the Allied deck gets bigger. Yep. And then later on, you add in the like extra kind of cards for when the U.S. joins the war. And then once that deck's finally run out, the game's over. So it acts as a timer as the Allied deck grows in strength. And the Axis also have uh, an, a changing deck, but that one isn't the timer of the game as well. No, but it's also it, it's a little more powerful at the beginning. And then you lose some of your better units, and your air power starts weakening. So yeah, I think they did a really good job on that, and frankly, comparing that to Lincoln, it's kind of the same. Very very concept. similar. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, in that one, it was the uh, the Union has this very weak deck to start with. It yeah. gets very strong by the end. Yeah, and the the CSA deck gets much much obviously much worse. Yeah. There's a lot of blank cards. In yes. Um, so this this uses that same card system. The unit-based and combat system is the same. Counters have a value of 1, 2, or 3. That's their combat strength. Uh, and that's how you determine you know, who wins or loses combat. Yeah. However, what's really cool about this game is how you take losses. In most so, games, that's based on strength points. Yeah. On this, it is not. To me, that is the best part of the combat system. It is so interesting and different from what you normally see. Yeah. And it really makes you... I mean, it really makes you consider what you're attacking with, how you're attacking. I, I love that part of the game. Yeah, so normally in a game, oh, you know, I've got 10 strength and you've got 8, eight and we roll a die, and then you would lose X amount of strength yeah. points. In this one, you have your strength points, and they're distributed with whatever counters you've got. And yeah, those... your counters are 1, 2, or 3. Yeah. Your tanks are 3. And you are not allowed to make change with them ever. No. And when you take losses, you do not take strength point losses. Mm -hmm. You take counter losses. If you lose, you take half half your counters rounded up, get removed. Which is key. The rounded up part is the key. Yeah, that's if you lose. If you win, half your counters rounded down, rounded down get removed. Yeah. And so it's it's this really, really interesting game of not only do you have to build good stacks, but if you have a stack of four three strength units that's very it's powerful. A powerful stack. But you in any combat and you lose two counters, you're then literally half strength. You've gutted yourself. As opposed to having I've got two three counters and two ones. If I lose that combat, I just lose the two ones yeah. and I'm still at a much greater strength than had I lost two three counters. Yes. And it's it's really really cool. It makes you f focus on not just how many units but what type of units mm -hmm. and you know, the the big units are really kind of expensive to build with card play and things like that. It's such a, it's such a cool system. And this just transports it into World War II and yeah. gives you um, a more open map than Lincoln. Yeah, I it, there were a couple of differences in the, I guess, the strategic approach of the yes. game. Comparing it to Lincoln, you really only had like three paths to Washington. Yeah. And, and you really were going... For Washington or Richmond, that was that was kind of what the sides were doing. You know, here you're going for Paris and Berlin, so it's kind of the same. You know, London and Berlin. Sorry, the Germans are trying to get Paris immediately, but there's three or four different ways to get there, yeah. particularly for the Allies. 
And I, I don't know, it's, it's a very interesting way that the designers, you know, we talked about that, particularly on the Eastern Front. There's kind of this weird, funky bottleneck, and I'm not going to say this, why don't you say that name for me, because... <laughs> It's Bialystok. Bialystok. That's, that's how I'm saying it. There you go. Bialystok. You know, Bialystok yes. becomes, in essence, the funnel of the invasion. You've got to take that before you kind of get to Kiev, Minsk. You can go up through Riga to get to Leningrad, but it's, you know, it's fairly well and then defended. And that's quite isolated. Or, but it gives you the option to swing down through Bucharest and yes. up to Kiev that way and kind of cut that off. This, And that's what I liked a lot about this game is... I love the system, which we learned in Lincoln, and now we've got it here. But this one, there's more routes, there's more options, yeah. there's more um, choices in how you get your victory points. You know, the, the Germans could focus on take Paris, take London, do some strategic bombing, and could very easily win that way. Yeah. Uh, or they could try and, you know, Barbarossa, let's try and storm uh, the USSR, take Leningrad, Moscow, Stalingrad, win that way. Uh, or they can do a bit of piecemeal. Now, if I can take uh, Leningrad, I can take Alexandria, I can take Paris, I can win that way. Yeah. And then the Allies similarly have those options. You know, I can take everything but Berlin, mm -hmm. or I can focus on Berlin and Rome and kind of leave all the other bits. How you how you get to where you want to be, uh, there's more options in this as well, which was something I enjoyed, uh, yeah. game-wise at least. So the, so the Allies won by having... Seven more points. Yeah, or having seven. So you have. I, to, I can't remember what that victory yeah, condition was. So this was. game, the victory points are tracked on a swing. Yeah. So if either side maintains a seven victory point differential um, at the end of the opposing player's turn, then they win an automatic victory. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, if the allies don't have a seven point victory lead, mm -hmm. then they lose the game. Because uh, they weren't able to destroy the Reich, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you do have this pendulum. So, you know, I might be trying to pick up all these smaller victory point cities like Naples and Warsaw. And you're like, screw it. I'll just do my strategic bombing and yeah. get some victory points there to negate to those negate ga that, yeah. gains on the ground. Yeah. And, and it's those extra layers that, to me, make this game. It, it's really yeah. fun in that way as well. What I'll do is I'll show you the board a little bit of how it plays, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the board, and this is kind of the end state of the game we just played. And it this did not go well at all for the Allies. Um, the Axis powers were able to um, build very strong Atlantic wall defenses and fortified um, Sicily significantly. So it was, I was breaking myself on a lot of those. We were able to finally break through in Normandy, take Paris, and we kind of swung around here, but unable to make any major advances um, into Central uh, Europe. We did take Berlin once. Um, uh, British, the Western Desert Force, kind of rushed up through Athens, Sarajevo, uh, they took Budapest, and they made a big strike into Berlin, but then had to retreat back out. Uh, and then they kind of cut Central Europe, but we ran out of time before we were able to do anything effective and pick up those victory points. So this was a, a, an Axis victory. But the gameplay itself, um, basically, it's card-driven. So you start off with this deck of cards that has a single chevron on it. And there's a, the deck's fairly large for, for either side. And you'll have, you know, anywhere from five or six cards. And the cards have a whole bunch of different icons on them. So this one has, you can build a two strength unit if you discard a card as well as playing this. Or you can use it as an air power card, which any time you do a, an offensive attack, you have to play an air power card as well. Or you can use it for this event. Normally, when you use it for an event, you would just discard it, right? You do the event, discard the card. Uh, if you're using it for the air power value to assist in an attack, same thing. You play it, and then it would get discarded. If you're using it to build this two-value uh, unit, you have to have... So, over your hand of cards, you're going to play this. I'm going to build a two-strength unit. So, you get your little two-strength German infantry. And let's say we'll stick them in Berlin. You also have to discard another card. 
So this card goes into the box, it is out of the game, which means you'll never be able to get these things ever. So it goes into the box, and you have to discard another card. So that costs three of your, you know, that's two of your, th you know, six hand... This is F6 cards. That's two of them, just to do one little thing. And then you might be like, well, I might build another one, or I might do a move operation, or I might do any of these other events, or I might do my strategic bombing, which is this. And strategic bombing, you play this, you also discard another card. This one doesn't go in the box, just discard them. And then it moves this up the strategic bombing track up here. And this is victory points, but also a negative to the opposition's um, hand size when they refill their hand. So it's a commitment to hurting your opponent in the long run is really what this is. Whenever you do a, a move operation and you want to do an attack, you have to have another card which has air power on it. So I play a move action, <coughs> excuse me, and, you know, we'll just, for the sake of it, let's say these guys are in Milan. And you play a move action, they're going to move down to Marseille, and then I have to play an air power card. Now what the ally player is going to do is they're either going to stand and fight, in which case they have the option to also play an air power card, and these are face down, so you don't know what they are, they'll be revealed. Um, I might, you know, I, let's say I'll play one of these as well, and then the Axis can maybe play a battle event, some of the events affect the battle, and then I might play an event as well, and let's say that's what happens and we resolve it, so the Axis player has three, four power, Plus one is five for their air power. I have one, a measly one, and I committed two, so I've, for my air power, so I've got three, and I played a great commander, so I'm at four, five. So it's a tie at this point. This event adds plus two, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, and they've got three, four, five. So a tie goes to the defender. And what happens is, is, the winner of the combat loses half of their units rounded up. Half of one rounded up. Or rounded down. No, rounded down, yes. So they don't lose any. The loser loses half their units rounded up. So they're just going to lose one. Oop, they're just going to lose one. And then they got to go back to where they came from. Now that was a whole lot of cards to be expended for that attack. But you can see, you know, the blind bidding for the air power and for... Um, any events you might have can drastically alter combats when they're close. Now, when you're fighting in big stacks like this, that same combat, oh, we lost one unit was removed because it was just small stacks. When it's these big stacks of, of strong units, things get very, very brutal very, very quickly. Um, and so you, your force composition is very important. So let's say the Germans decide to attack the Allies. And they're going to play this as their air power card. And... The allies don't have as many cards, they're not, not in as good shape, so they're going to play one as well. And we don't have any battle events, so we're just going to dish it out here. So, the Axis forces have a lot of tanks down here, it's super not fun. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 altogether. And the allied forces have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14, 15, 16, 17. So, the allies are going to lose this combat. So the allies are going to lose half their counters rounded up. Luckily, half their counters is only three. So we're going to lose one one unit, one one unit, and one two unit. And the Axis forces, even though they won, they're going to lose half their units rounded down. But half of four is still four, so they're going to lose one, two, three, four. So as much as I won that combat, I, I lost seven Axis strength points, and the Allies only lost four strength points. Now, the Allies do have to retreat, so they're going to move back to Paris, and I now control this space. But now, I've still got 12 strength points, that's still pretty powerful, but without those one unit effective body bags if 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 I choose to go in and you know if we do an attack here I'm gonna start losing my tank units 
and the tank units taking those as losses is really 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 painful because to build a tank unit it's th three you lose this good card which has move air power and a nice event on it this is gone from the game and you had to discard two cards from your hand to play it so hand wise this is a significant investment to build this unit so I throw this away and I discard two cards and and having fewer cards means you know I've got less options to do other things so it just it hurts you in your in your economy if you start taking massive losses on all these tank uh, three power units but that's that's how this game works you have to keep yourself in supply through all these routes so it is possible for yeah Barbarossa to charge up here and get cut off and and you're out of supply and you start losing units every t turn um, these are the victory point uh, cities one three one two four one and so you're trying to capture those to get that victory point swing um, but that's really what this game is it's it's this really tight hand management trying to do your ops and trying to minimize your attrition so that you can keep attacking and keep attacking and keep attacking. This is a very offensive minded game. The Axis have to attack early and a lot and then the Allies do have to counter attack and you can't just wait. You can't wait till the Americans come in. You have to fight otherwise the Axis will just build up these really strong fortresses that it takes so long, so many resources to attack a trit and then rebuild your forces that they'll run out of time. You've got to do it quickly. And that's what makes this game enjoyable. That it's always tense and it's always at a good pace on the last couple of hours. So that's really the core of the game. It's very, very simple. Um, and what I'll do a wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the board. Um, it's this is a light ish game. I mean I would agree. It's, light. It, it's, it's a longer game. Yeah. Two to three hours is what this game's going to take you to play. It, and that's if it goes the full length. Right. Which I think most, most of, of the, the time, time it will. will. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it says victory within two hours. It's a, it's about two, is what I would say on average. Yeah. Um, but the rules book is like eight pages. Yeah, the rules are very it's so simple. Easy to learn. I think the card text is very clear. I very rarely had a time... Or I looked at an event and asked myself, how does this work? I don't, you know, yeah, a I lot of times card-driven games really, you know, there's so many nuances. These were fairly straightforward and, and fairly basic. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting game that I felt like even near the very end, there was a lot of tension. Yes. Particularly in the way that battles could go. And then those paths to that victory, those victory point cities... I think the Allies have three or four different options that you can really focus on. I think the Axis also has, you know, you can go for Paris and just try to hold it and then really ignore Barbarossa. I, I, I didn't get very far, right? But yes, but, and that's, that's what's cool about this game is you don't necessarily need to get that far. No. You don't have to go all the way to Grozny and Stalingrad because... That second part of the game for the Axis is it's doing this delaying action yeah. and um, withdrawing, but doing it slowly enough and maintaining your forces enough that when you get back to things like Warsaw and Budapest, you've got you know fortresses there that you can kind of retreat into. Right. But you've delayed it so long that then it becomes a monumental task to break those mm -hmm. and then take Berlin in time. Yeah. And there were a couple of times you actually took Berlin, yeah. right, with a stack of British and American from the south, because I kind of, I did an aggressive move, and... Yeah, and it was this counterattack. It didn't really work out for me, but I kind of left my flank open and you moved in. But immediately I was able to kind of get back in there and and kick you out. But I, that, that, that wave of momentum, you've got to, as the axis, you got to build that up, and then you do, you kind of just delay it you don't need to take moscow like you said you just need to delay it yeah if you if you can't get those victories early it's not worth wasting your resources breaking yourself right. upon them you're like nope i'm just gonna build my line 
and we're going to bring it back in slowly because this game's on a timer and, yeah. I, and I can prevent them from winning. Yeah. Um, so, so the other thing that, and you mentioned this, that strategic bombing thing, I did something totally ahistorical, right? There there were some attacks on, on London, but yeah. after a while, the, the Germans had to give up on that because they needed resources other places. I really went in on that pretty hard pretty quickly, and it pushed it to the point where you lost a couple of cards. For a significant you, portion of the game. I think the most you ever lost was two, but usually that's something you would think the Allies would And, it, and maybe if I'd have committed that to a little bit earlier, your hand size would have been hampered. Right. And then that would have hurt you on the defensive more. more. And that's, so there's, it's neat little bits of chrome like that. That, um, it, you know, whilst this, this is a simple and very easy to learn game, yeah. there's a lot of thought that goes into some of these yep. decisions you got to make. And I, that's why I, I enjoy it so much, because it's, yeah. it's rules light, but there's enough crunch here to be like, oh, okay, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. But it still, yeah, it still takes just a couple hours and yeah. fight the whole thing. And it's, it's still a fun game. I, I would think this would be a great game to bring new people into wargaming. Yeah. It has some of the wargaming concepts, but it, it it's fairly straightforward. But once again, there are some strategic and tactical decisions that you have to make, yes. particularly in those losses and where you put forces and how you delay and prevent. I, yeah, I really had a good time with this. I had a very good time with Lincoln. Which did you like better, this or Lincoln? So I think I liked, for the gameplay, I think I liked this one more only because the map isn't quite as linear. Mm -hmm. I'm not right. saying it's like the most mind-blowing of games in that you can do everything. 25 right? choices, It's still yeah. some point to point, but yeah. there's there's more options and more choice in how you do things in this one versus that one. That one, that there's parts of the map and it's literally just straight lines. So right. You just kind of have to, you have to fight down these lanes. This one's got a bit more, a bit more choice in there, so I think mm -hmm. I like that a bit more. Okay. But I, Lincoln's got that beautiful map. Yeah, the map Which is this, awesome. This map is m more Spartan and functional than anything yeah, else, but that yeah. one was, oh, it looks great on the table yeah. too. I, if I compared the two, it, it's it's very close. I think I give the push to Lincoln. I, I felt like I liked Lincoln better because of I, 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 just some of the different cards they had were a little different than the cards here. Th this is a great game. I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this, but I feel like I liked Lincoln better. I think I like this one. You like this one I better? Think, yeah, I think uh, from a gameplay, I think I enjoyed this more. And it's been a while since we've played Lincoln, yeah. so it's been two years. But I, but, but the system is so good, Yeah. and I think transporting that to this World War II setting lets you know how robust it is. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be interested to see if they did anything else with it, but yeah. if they didn't, this is still a fantastic game. This. So f here's what I will say about this. I will play this over something like Hitler's Reich every single time. Oh, I would agree. Yeah. This to me is a much more enjoyable game. Than yes, me. yes. If I'm going to play the whole of, you know, the European theater in a two-hour game, this is probably the one I'm going to choose. Yeah. I don't know if there's any others that are as clean and as easy, uh, but still have good challenge to them yeah. that this does. I, this is a, I like this one a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good game. Production is awesome. The counters yeah. are all different. You know, they have the the different nations, you know, tank types and unit types and their uniforms. I really liked that. Yeah, the only thing that was a little bit weird is you no get American all these American markers. forces, but you don't get the American markers. Yeah. It's all done with the Union Jack. But, yeah. But I guess, I don't know if that's just a safe counter space more than anything else. But. We, we talked about the map. It, it, the colors, we're, we're not big fans of that. Yeah, the, the the dark blue for the Western Allies and the dark gray for the... Very for close. The, for the Axis is, is very close and... You know, it's it's a really simple fix. It doesn't, doesn't hurt the gameplay in any way, no. but like, you know, there's you, the the board could have been a little bit prettier. Yeah. Even though, like, I like the font and I like the style of it, but you know, it, it, in this day and age, like, it could be. It could be a little. You more. could just like put yeah. in that extra step, and this would be like amazing. Yeah. So to me, two parts of this design that I really, really love: the card design. Really love that system. The fact that the decks build yeah. or shr or contract, yeah. depending on if you're Axis or Allies. I also like the multi-use part of it from the air power and the events in your combat to building your units, moving your units. Very well done. And I really love the attritional style of the combat. Yeah. That, that is such a... 
it really, it, it's a very unique. Now, somebody's probably going to say, well, Grant, th this is done in these 15 games. Then, well, then, yeah. we haven't played those, but it's so unique because it makes you think about combat so very differently. Yeah. And I like that. And there's, there's some times where you're going to launch a very big stack of ones against your very big stack of threes, and they're like, yep. you would never do that in real life. But, but in the game, but in you the would. game, you're like, I will do that yeah, every, every time because I can, I can yep. absorb four one losses. You cannot absorb four three no. losses. There's so many because yeah. each of that represents so many cards that have been thrown out of the game or been used in turns to discards. It, it, well, it and you a can't get blow. your power is going to continue to get cut. Yeah, you know, you might attack with ten ones at, at a ten strength. I'm going to have three tanks at a nine strength, plus say a a one. Well, no, not even. Yeah, you know, I happen to win the battle, man. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose a tank, an entire tank. Yeah, you're gonna lose five guys, but who cares? They're easily replaceable. Yes, very easy to replace. And that's that's what it's such a neat system. Yeah. I was so happy when I got the game. I was like, oh, it's another European theater game. But I was reading. I'm like, oh, oh it's yeah. this system. This is great. So I, it, yeah. I, I enjoy. It. The one thing I like about this is the cards. Uh, agonizing at times mm -hmm. where oh I need to make this attack or I need to make this amphibious assault or I only have one amphibious assault card yeah. but that's also my really good air power card so I've yep. got to use terrible air power if I want to do the amphib assault so then do I just make a regular ground assault over here so yeah. I can use that or it's like oh I've got this amazing event on here but I really need to build that three strength tank unit mm -hmm. But then I'm going to lose this event forever because it's going yeah. to go out of the game. Yep. And if you do and it too much, it can just it can cut the legs you. right out of you. Well, and, and that is such a fascinating part of that design. Those those three power units they are very important. But man, that card gets thrown in the box. Yeah. And sometimes the event on that card, like strategic deployment or the, weapons development, the great command is, are so oh. good that it. It's really painful to throw those away. Yeah. So that, to me, if you feel that pain in your decisions, that's a great design. Yeah. Someone's gone through it enough, massaged it enough, and made it that way that it's an interesting and challenging play. I mean, that's what it's about. So I, I really enjoy this system in these games. Yeah, and that's from a CDG, that's what I want, basically. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I like the hand management, right? We play a lot of games that have that. Yep. It's something that's enjoyable to me. I'm like, okay, how am I going to be able to do what I want to do uh, without it being like debilitating? Yeah. It's not that bad. Um, but yeah, there's tension in your card play. The execution on the board is is very cool. Mm -hmm. And for me, that, that's that's why I like this game so much. I really like the system. Stick it in World War Two. That's great. Yeah. And open up the map a bit. So there's. You know, there's much more options, like, to do, you know, one thing here or there where you're like, oh, okay, that yeah. strategically alters maybe what you have to do, or I'm just putting pressure there so that you're mm -hmm. maybe in two minds about doing something yep. else. Yep, And that, there's, that's what I like about Struggle for Europe, is there's more options to do that. Yeah. So... I had a great time with this. I like this game a lot. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Struggle for Europe from Worthington. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.